So uh, welcome back again. Very excited everyone is here. Um, this part is a little bit technical. It's um, we're going to be preparing our render settings and our export settings to elevate our render from the render you're seeing here right now from the live viewer inside Octane to let's quickly switch inside After Effects to, as you can see here, this is like the default render we rendered out to this part. As you can see here, we have some uh, atmospheric mist. We have some volumetric lights uh, emitting out of like these light sources. And all of this is done inside After Effects, not Octane. Because if I wanted to do it inside Octane, it, I think it would increase my render time to three to times, three, four times more the default render times. So we'll learn how to do some tips and tricks to properly export our render passes, our camera data, our light data inside After Effects so we can uh, switch it from this one you're seeing here to this one. Okay, so let's get started. So um, I'm unchecking my camera. And as you see here, I have some default Cinema 4D light. I think you've been seeing it since the beginning of these tutorials. What I want to do is <clears throat> I want to replace these lights with volumetric lights because if I quickly switched inside After Effects, you would see that it's only a specific um, uh, layer that has an effect that tracks perfectly, that tracks perfectly, as you can see here, to the light sources. So what we'll do is, it's as simple as, if I go inside my mech group, <clears throat> I just created a default spotlight and please make sure that it's a spotlight, not a point light. Because replacing a point light inside After Effects with the volumetric spotlight won't work if your default light inside of Cinema 4D is a point light. So you have to make sure that the light you're creating, you want to replace with a volumetric light inside After Effects. It's a default spotlight. And it doesn't have to be visible. It doesn't have to have any intensity. It doesn't have to be anything. I can set the intensity even to um, zero. So it doesn't affect my uh, rendering phase. I just want to... I just want it to be act as a helper or as a, a guide for After Effects to know that this specific part of the image or the render is going to be replaced with a volumetric light. So what I did is <clears throat> I carefully placed lights, as you can see here, on top of the um, volumetric lights that's going to be replaced inside After Effects. So this is a light, and I added more lights, as you can see. As you can see, I have around 10 lights. These lights are going to be replaced <clears throat> inside After Effects. So three here, three here, and two on the top here, and two on the top here. So this is the first part. So... Um, in terms of uh, camera animation, I'm going to roll back inside my camera. And as you can see here, I just have a simple camera movement <clears throat> on the Z-axis and on the rotation. And as you can see, let me pause that quickly. This is my camera movement. So it's very, very, very simple. Also, I added another light at the bottom, which is a fairly um, warm light that is towards red. I think the temperature is around 700. And I added something called a signal tag. It's a plugin that allows me, as you can see here, to animate the light on and off quickly. So it instantly creates like this flashing contrasty effect. So this is off. This is on yep here it's on so it's basically flickering the light on and off you can easily do that if you don't have the plugin um, with manual keyframes but just it, it saves like a lot of time if you have like 
longer projects and longer animations. Also, what else do I have? So some render settings. So I'll go and then click on options uh, as I believe. Oh no, sorry, I'm not options. Uh, I'll click um, Control D and make sure my output is set to 1280 by 720. My frame rate is 24 frames per second <laughs> and it's selected to all frames. The frame range is from 0 to 360. I'll also click, um, I think, uh, Control D, Control D, so it opens my project settings um, and make sure the frames per second too is set to 24 frames per second. And then <coughs> I'll add some multi passes because if I switch back to After Effects, you can easily see that I have some uh, nice atmospheric that was also not done inside of Octane to save render times. So I'll go back to my render settings by clicking Control B and then go inside Octane Render, switch over to Render AOV, enable the AOVs, and I'll just like delete the old ones so I can easily tell you how it is from the start. So the first thing I would add is click on this toggle search and type Z depth. <clears throat> and as you can see, I have a Z path added. And if I click this icon, the Z icon inside the live viewer, you can see that it's totally white. So to adjust it, I click on this uh, down drop button and slowly increase my, my depth max to something like 50, maybe something like 60. And the environment depth, I'll add a number like 80, maybe increase it a little bit more, 80, 100, maybe 150. Yeah, I think 150 is going to look better. And I'll make this around 180. So what we added right now is something called a depth pass or a Z depth path. It, it carefully maps my whole environment from black to white with grayscale value to show the depth information. So we'll see how we're going to use this Z path in the post-production phase later on. Then um, I'll go back to my AOV manager and type reflection. I'll slowly add denoiser reflection direct and denoiser reflection indirect. And as you can see here, it's adding also reflection passes that we will use inside of compositing. Of course, we can add a lot more later in rendering, but um, I prefer to use for like these quick uh, practice projects to just like add a Z pass and a reflection pass with both direct reflection and indirect reflections to composite on top of my final renders. Of course, my final render, I make sure also to um, enable my <clears throat> octane denoiser of course octane denoiser so i can denoise my image and it doesn't like spend a lot of time and you can obviously see the difference between the noised image and the denoised image increase my in my samples to to something around um let's say 3000 so yeah so that's probably most of everything. So uh, once you click um, on the picture viewer to render your image and it's done rendering, there's just like one final step that we need to add, which is inside the render settings, which is going to the output, sorry, the save path. And um, it's, uh, it's something specific to Cinema 4D, which is really a nice integration between Cinema 4D and, and After Effects. Is you go into a compositing, you check the save part, the, sa the save checkbox, and include 3D data, and make sure it's for After Effects, and you save a project. And as you can see here, I have a file called data.aec, and we'll see um, how important this file is when we go uh, back to After Effects. That will help us composite um, our volumetric lights and um, composite our depth pass and um, elevate our render from like this default row render to something that looks a little bit more um, cinematic and interesting. So 
I hope you enjoyed this um, part. Uh, if you didn't subscribe, please consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next part. Thank you.